G'day, I'm Paul. So you guys have been asking a lot about the Land Rover Discovery and we've finally got our hands on one. This is the facelifted version. Now this spec in particular, it's interesting because it's kind of the base model, but it's got some R dynamic stuff on it. So this is a bit of a mouthful. It's the Land Rover Discovery P360, which is the engine, R dynamic S. And it's priced at a little under $110,000. If that's too expensive, the whole range kicks off at around that $100,000 mark. There is a model year 23 version coming of this as well. So keep an eye out for that. Now, what about the competitors? Well, this competes with things like the BMW X5, the Mercedes-Benz GLE, and the Audi Q7. And the reason this is just slightly different to the rest of those, you know, this is seven seats. The others are available with seven seats as well, but it is kind of bigger and more off-road friendly too. So it's kind of in a bit of a niche on its own. Now, today we're going to do a detailed review of this. So if you do want to skip ahead to other parts of the review, you can use the time codes up on the screen there, or if you're on YouTube, scroll down and use the chapters below. And if you haven't done so already, subscribe to our channel, press the bell icon. That's going to tell you every single time we drive one of these things. Let's talk exterior design. Now, before I run you through the colors, I love this. So I noticed this first on the Discovery Sport and it's now here on the Discovery as well. It's basically the model grade integrated with the VIN number. And I think that's just, it's cool because it's just something different and gives everyone an idea of what's under the bonnet. So yeah, just something interesting. So you've got 12 exterior colors to pick from. Make sure you're sitting down. All but white is an additional two-ish thousand dollars. This color here, is about $4,000. I just don't understand how they can get away with charging so much for paint colors. But anyway, so in terms of the design, um, we'll talk about the back separately because I think that's probably the most controversial part about the Discovery. But I love the way this looks, especially in this color. I know it's expensive, but it really makes this pop. And with Yard Dynamic trim, I love all these black highlights as well. So Discovery along the bonnet there is all black. You've got this grill that's got all of those sections blacked out. Top sections are filled in and then behind there you've got those active vanes because this is the turbocharged six cylinder with mild hybrid tech and they've integrated those vanes to do adaptive cooling which I think is pretty cool. Little Land Rover logo just down the bottom there. More black down the bottom of these sections and you've got cooling on either sides there. If we jump over here to the headlights, full LED headlights. You can get matrix LED lights, but this car doesn't come standard with those. But you do get LED daytime running lights. And I have mentioned in other off-road reviews, headlight washers. They are kind of old school, but they are important because when you are driving off-road, you can sometimes get uh, mud come up through these sections that coats the headlights and this is able to blast it away so you can actually see what you're doing, which I think is um, a really handy feature. Whip around to the side. Down here, you've got 20 inch alloy wheels and all-terrain tires. I love that sort of dark graphite style finish on the wheel. It looks really cool there with the piano black on those wheel arches. Now you might be wondering, why is this car sitting so low? Well, it has an access height feature. So it has air suspension. And what happens is when you park, you open the door, the car lowers itself, I think it's by around 20 millimeters or so to give you easy entry and egress from the car. I think it's a really good feature. I've seen this before on other Land Rover and Range Rover products. And I think it, uh, it just makes getting in and out much easier. Now, up here, you've got a Discovery, just in case you forgot what you were driving. You've got an LED indicator built into there with a camera for the 360 camera. This has a very cool off-road camera feature. I'll run you through that when we do a bit of light off-roading. I love the black here. It continues onto the roof there as well, and it really beautifully offsets with the orange body color. Privacy glass, you got another Land Rover logo nestled into there. And this is what I'm talking about. It's just a little bit controversial because, I don't know, it just looks a little bit strange. I reckon it's got that really flat back on it, and it's quite wide as well. It's, yeah, it's not centered. I don't know. Let me know what you think of the comments section below. Do you think this looks good or do you think the design is a bit of a miss? And it's a rare miss in my opinion because the rest of the Land Rover and Range Rover products I think look fantastic. So anyway, outside of the design, you've got LED tail lights along the back here. The Land Rover logo with the engine designation Discovery along the back there. Up the top, you've got a shark fin aerial. You've got a spoiler built into here. A little hole here for aero and stuff. You've got a wiper tucked into there. Keep in mind as well, that means it isn't on display here. I really like it when they just make that disappear so you don't see it. LED brake light in there as well. By the way, you've also got a three and a half ton braked towing capacity. So we are inside the Discovery. Let's start off with the key. So you've got lock, unlock, lights, boot and panic. 
And then on the back there, you've got the Land Rover logo. It's a proximity sensing key, so in your pocket. And then once you're inside, you've got the start button up the top there. I really, really like this update. So added to this is the huge PV Pro infotainment system. We'll run through that in a little bit more detail shortly, but I do like that they've gone to town with Defender-esque materials through here. So you remember from our Defender reviews that they use this sort of, I don't know what it is. It's like a canvas-like material along the dashboard there. And I think it just really splits up the colors beautifully and really just makes this pop. And then you can see it along the dash there as well. Instead of going down the path of leather or just another rubber material, got whatever this is um yeah i don't know if you know what the material is let me know in the comment section below it feels like a canvas or something like that so really good layout and i think that they've uh, really thought about practicality here as well now in terms of your touch points so all of this stuff is soft and then your actual touch points they're pretty soft and same story on the door how soft are they well We've got our durometer, we've tested the main surfaces in this cabin. If you want to see how this car compares to others that we've tested before, have a look at the link in the description. Build quality, let's have a little look. Yeah, look, that all feels pretty solid. Yeah, I like it. Um, door. Yeah, that's nice and solid. Excellent, love it. Okay, let's talk about infotainment. So Pivi Pro, it's the name of Land Rover's new infotainment system. And in the Discovery, you're getting the 11.4 inch version of it. So they do a slimline version that you'll find in the Discovery Sport and then this big one right here. That just looks so good. It is incredibly high resolution. And I think that in a modern car today, you really need to go to town on, on just making the screen look as good as it can. And they've absolutely nailed it here. So it comes with instant on, which means that it's always kind of running in the background so that when you get inside the car, you can just hit something and then immediately it's ready to go. You don't need to sit around waiting for it to load. And that means your experience is going to be much quicker in terms of response times to button presses. In terms of radio, you have AM, FM, DAB plus digital radio. It's all plumbed through, in this case, an optional 12-speaker Meridian branded sound system. The sound system itself is excellent. So if you do value uh, audio quality, it is worth optioning the optional sound system. Then if you have a look here at the other menus, you've actually got some fascinating things here. So air quality, this will tell you the quality of the air outside the car and inside the car. You can then run purification or ionization as well. So this is a great setup and I haven't really seen this in any other non-JLR products. In addition to that, you have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Now, it is capable of wireless. It isn't wireless at the moment, but there is a software update coming. And just on software updates, this is capable of over-the-air updates to something like over 40 modules within the car. And one of those updates that's going to come is the ability to do Apple CarPlay and Android Auto wirelessly. Have a look at that. That is a giant screen there for Apple CarPlay. Nice and fast as well. Very impressive setup. And this is what Android Auto looks like. So again, nice big screen display and quick as well. So yeah, I love that they've gone to the effort to actually integrate this properly and make it look as good as it does here. Now, one more screen ahead of the driver is a 12.3 inch display. So uh, also high resolution screen, but it can be a little bit laggy when you're driving. You'll notice that some of the needles are a little slow to move. You'll see that when we do go for a drive. You can also configure this to show you different things in the center, but I reckon it needs a bit of a redo. I would like to see something a little more high in there. You can also option a head-up display. You'll hear me using that word a lot, option, because this car has a few of them on there. So if you are buying one of these, just keep in mind some of the stuff that we talk about may not be standard. Uh, but the head-up display, I really like that because you've got some off-road functions, on-road functions, and then different displays depending on the drive mode, which I will go through when we go for a spin later on. Next up, let's talk safety technology. So you have autonomous emergency braking that works in both forwards and reverse. You've got an auto dimming rear vision mirror, lane departure warning and a lane keeping assistant. You have radar cruise control. You have a safe exit assistant as well that prevents you from opening the door if there's another car or a cyclist or something like that coming. There's blind spot monitoring built into the wing mirror. And then when it comes to parking, you've got both front and rear parking sensors and a 360 degree camera. I'll show you what that looks like. Uh, quality of this is excellent. So you can choose between on-road, off-road and towing. I'll take you through off-road when we do go off-road, but your on-road 360 camera is excellent. And I love the way that you can play around with these little things as well to get different views. It's a super high quality, high resolution screen. 
What you can also do is come down here and then select those different angles depending on what you want it to do. It can automatically select these as well while you're driving. So uh, that's all sort of pretty straightforward. In addition to that, uh, you can also select your towing mode. So if you are doing some towing, this makes hooking up a trailer far easier. Now, what about practicality? And we'll start off with connectivity. So there's a good mixture of USB-C and USB-A ports inside the car. So you've got one USB-C down here. You have another USB-C port here plus a USB-A port. You have wireless phone charging. It is optional in the MY22, but it is going to be standard in the MY23. And then in terms of storage for your phone, well, you've got a little nook just here for storage. So you can pop the phone there if you want. You can also pop the phone here in the center. There are plenty of options there. And then your coffee cup. You can have an enormous coffee cup if you want, if you're into that sort of uh, strange thing, or you can have a smaller coffee cup there. You also have bottle holders that slot into there, plus ones with rubber there as well, if you do need just that little bit more um, sort of grip. And then you can also pull these out as well if you want to remove the grippiness from there. Storage inside the doors fits a small bottle. Let's try our big one. I reckon it needs to fit a big one, given this is a family car. Perfect, fits a big bottle there of water or wine. It depends if you've got the kids or not. Oh yeah, and you can also fit your water slash wine in here as well, so yeah, pretty good. Uh, other storage, you have this enormous center console here. So the top layer is for coins and cards and all that sort of stuff, but then when you peel back the second layer, watch this, literally make my arm disappear in there. So that's a pretty awesome setup. And then this also goes all the way back as well. If somebody from the second row needs to get things out of here, they don't need to go over the top of it, which I think is great. You also have a glove box down here, reasonably sized there. So even with the manual in there, it sort of has plenty of room to put bits and pieces. You then have another storage compartment up the top here with a 12 volt outlet. You've got this hook down here if you're responsible for dinner. You can pop your takeaway on that. You've got a sunglasses holder up the top here. And finally, have a look at this little tricky thing here. So you push this and you've got a secret storage spot in there that you can't see from outside the car. And then when you plug it back into that spot, it actually gives you your comfort controls. And speaking of which, you've got dual zone automatic climate control. So there it is there. To access the fan controls, you pull on this and then adjust as required. And I love how that's got a rubber edge to it. It's like a tire or something like that. And then to access your heated seats, you simply push that in and you can do what you need to do there. So really cool setup. What about your seats? Now the seats, I think, look fantastic. They've got that rib design, offset colors, offset stitching as well. They are quite comfortable, so they hug you in nicely. This car has the optional captain's chairs, so you get this little doodad here that you can rest your arm on. It also brings with it seat heating and then a whole stack of adjustments. So you can go forwards, backwards, do the backrest forwards, backwards. You can lift the base up and down and you can also adjust your bolsters as well. You also have memory over here and for the passenger side as well. And then on the steering front, your steering offers both tilt and reach adjustment. And on our reach test, all of this stuff is easy to reach while you're driving. Okay, we are in the second row of the Discovery, so grab handle to get in with a little coat hook there as well. In terms of room, knee room is okay, but not amazing. I would have expected maybe a little bit more room back here, but my driver's seat is pretty far back. I do have loads of toe room though, and headroom is excellent thanks to that cutout in the roof there. In terms of your other creature comforts, they've moved the air vents from the pillar to the centre stack here, so you can adjust those as required. This car has the optional third zone of climate control, so this is where you control that for the second row. You've got USB connectivity down the bottom here, USB-A port, two USB-C ports, and a 12 volt outlet. The seat design is similar to the front there with that ribbed finish and then the offset colours. Centre armrest here with two cup holders. Pop our bottle in there, no problems at all. There's rubber teeth in there to hold your bottle in position. And then the bottle can fit inside the door as well. You have two map pockets behind here. You can recline the seats. So if you want to kick back a little bit, you can whip those back and it's electrically adjustable. You can also move this in a 60-40 split forwards and backwards. You've got two isofix points on the outboard seats and three top tether points. Now our window test, let's see what happens when we put this down. Okay, so it almost goes all the way down, but I'm curious to know, would you prefer it to go all the way down or do you want it to sort of stop a little bit early for kids? Uh, let me know in the comments section below.
Now let's talk third row. Part of the reason people buy Discovery is because you can fit adults in the third row. Well, you used to be able to. So let's see if that's still the case now. You can deploy the third row from the boot or from here using these controls. And then to get into the third row, you push this button here. It's a 60-40 split folding configuration. This folds forward and then you manually pull that out of the way and then clamber on in. All right, so. I am in, let me put this all the way back. So keeping in mind that right now this is in its furthest back position, you can still move this forward if you need to. So there's my knee room, I don't have any. Uh, toe room is excellent though, and headroom is actually pretty good for an adult back here. This can go forward and that's going to give you a little bit more room there. In terms of other creature comforts you have back here, if you open up this little cubby hole, you've got a USB A port, you've got one on this side as well. Um, Look, I think this is actually not a bad spot. So obviously I wouldn't want to be in here for seven hours, but as an adult, I'm actually surprised at how much room there is here. I just keep referring back to something like a 300 series Land Cruiser where I feel like a, I don't know, I'm doing a downward dog or whatever some yoga move is, but I just don't fit into the third row, whereas this is really good. If you do have kids, keep in mind as well that these two seats offer Isofix and Top Tether. So you can actually put baby seats across all of the seats in the Discovery. So not a bad setup. Let's have a look at the boot. I'm keen to see how much room there is here behind the third row. So you get in by pushing the button, also off center by the looks of it. Uh, powered tailgate, no longer a split tailgate, which is a great shame. So you have a little over 250 liters of cargo space here behind the third row. And beneath this floor, you have storage for a couple of odds and ends and also the control to get your spare tire down, which is located just under here. There's also a hook down here and a hook up here as well. Now, before I drop the third row, let's have a look at what we can fit in terms of bags. So it is pretty much just my laptop bag uh, that you can fit in there. Really not much else is gonna go in there, maybe shopping or something like that. Over this side, you have a 12 volt outlet and what appears to be the Starship Enterprise in terms of buttons. So it's a little bit complicated, but it's self-explanatory once you've had a crack at it. Button here to lower the suspension to get stuff in and out a little bit easier. But my favorite option is the ability to get rid of these seats electronically. So all you do is push here and here, and then the seats will disappear into the floor. Goodbye seats. And then once they're gone, you have a little bit over 1100 liters of cargo space here. I'll show you what it looks like with our bags in there. There you go, it's a pretty mammoth boot. Finally, uh, if you come back to the Starship Enterprise, you can then coax your second row into disappearing as well. So same story, you just push these buttons down and then that disappears off. So you have a fairly flat floor. It's a little bit slow, but it does get there eventually, I promise. There we go, once that's down, you have over 2000 liters of cargo space. So this is a pretty practical SUV, I reckon. We're on the road in the Disco, so let me run you through the engine first. I really like this engine. So three litre turbocharged six cylinder petrol engine, similar to the engine that you find in the Defender. That means it has 48 volt mild hybrid setup. It produces 265 kilowatts of power and 500 newton metres of torque. It's just a really nice, hardy amount for a vehicle that weighs sort of near that two and a half tonne mark. And that's all made into an eight speed automatic transmission. So what does it all feel like behind the wheel? Uh, look, you've got that 48 volt mild hybrid system that facilitates an integrated starter generator. So with the auto stop start system, it's incredibly smooth. And when it switches on and off, you can barely feel a thing. That's what I love about these mild hybrid setups. But once you are driving, it's just such a beautiful and hardy engine. And you know what, it kind of has vibes of XR6 Turbo, uh, the straight six in the Supra. You know, when you get stuck into it, it's got a unique note and it just really beautifully pushes you into the back and, and sort of gets moving nicely. So yeah, I have a lot of time for this engine and I think it suits this chassis and this vehicle really nicely. Land Rover claims a zero to 100 time of six and a half seconds. This is how it went when we put it up against our stopwatch. With 
with that transmission, it's made into a permanent all-wheel drive system, and it doesn't feel like one of those on-demand systems. Regardless of what you're doing, it's always got sort of all four wheels ready to receive torque, and, and I think that is uh, very confidence-inspiring when you're at the snow or something like that. And the gearbox itself, like you can just get stuck into it at any point, and it really responds quite quickly and with enough punch there to get you moving so if you're doing overtaking and that kind of thing it is just never going to leave you wanting for more let's talk fuel economy one of the downsides with this engine is that it does use a bit of fuel land rover claims 9.2 liters per 100 k's we're currently sitting on 22.3 uh, i will say we changed the order of things today we did our off-road filming first uh, the car's also been idling a little bit as well so it is higher than what you would expect but i have found with this engine in other land rovers that it can be pretty thirsty so it could be worth going the diesel if you're going to be doing towing or a lot of long distance driving let's talk about ride i think that land rover They've, they've done a, a really interesting job here because this is a vehicle that needs to be capable off-road, but it also needs to be nice and comfortable on-road. It's sold in Europe, so it needs to be able to go fast on an autobahn. And that is tricky to tune for, to have such a big breadth of requirements for your vehicle. But what they've managed to do is fit this with air suspension and also adaptive damping. And that means that you're getting a really smooth and svelte ride, especially here on country roads. If you drop a wheel off the edge of the road, it just never feels unsure of itself. Even if you catch potholes and stuff in and around the city, it's really nice and smooth as well. And then when you are off-road, it can do the, the increased ride height without being really jarring inside the cabin. Often with air suspension, if you go to a super high ride height, the ride is very brittle and harsh, but here it's just a, a good balance of comfort, but also capability when it comes to cornering. And what about your road noise? Well, look, it's a pretty quiet place to be seated. Generally, Land Rovers aren't too bad, and you're going to be doing a lot of touring in this car with the family, potentially. Even here on a course chip country road, it's nice and quiet inside the cabin, and there's not a great deal of noise intruding into here. Let's talk handling. You don't really have uh, drive mode. You can get adaptive dynamics, but uh, here, I've just popped it into sport. We'll see how it fares throughout a corner. That's great. It actually feels very much like the Defender, where it sits surprisingly flat despite the fact it's it's a big size. And then when you get up it, it really gets up and boogies. It is, um, it's an impressive chassis and the refinements they've made to it with these Ingenium engines are really good. Let's talk about steering feel at low speeds. It's actually really nice. So it doesn't suffer from the issue that some vehicles do uh, that are off-road capable, where you have to turn a million times to, to be able to do stuff at low speeds. So it's nice and soft and, and it really is effortless when it comes to parking. You've got front and rear parking sensors and it means that you can easily get the car into where you need to park it without having to wrestle the steering wheel. Turning circle comes in at 12.4 metres, pretty big, but generally with vehicles this size that are off-road capable, the turning circle is pretty enormous. Visibility out the front there, it's great. I have a really high seating position here so I can see the corners of the bonnet. Uh, out the sides, big wing mirror with blind spot monitor built into those. Out the back, it's not great. We don't even have the third row up and it's tricky to see out the back of that window. So I'm gonna point out one thing that's really annoying me. This setup down here, for some reason, just keeps switching on and off. And just while we're driving, it goes from this view here, which is air conditioning controls to just back and forward and I don't know whether there's an electrical issue or something like that, but yeah, it's really disappointing and, and it kind of just annoys me. If you're going to spend this much money on a car, why can they not get that stuff right when they're testing the car and engineering it? I mean, that really is just not good enough. So the Land Rover Discovery, you're kind of buying it because you're going to do a little bit of off-road driving. So today we're going to do a little bit of light off-road driving and test some of the functionality that you have here. So I'll run you through the specs. You have 253 millimeters of ground clearance when you go into off-road mode and you have two of those off-road modes in terms of the height. So you can really jack it up quite high if you need to. Standard ride height is closer to that 200 millimeter mark. In terms of the approach and departure angles, your approach angle is 26 degrees. That's the angle of the face you can approach before you hit the front of the car and then the departure angle is 24.8 degrees which is the same but in reverse you've got a low range transfer case you have a rear differential lock that has been optioned on this car there's also a, uh, a center differential lock as well so it can apportion 50 percent of torque to the front and rear axle and then the diff lock on the rear splits at 50 50 on that axle alone you have a hill descent control and also a low traction launch mode so there's a fair bit there so what i'm going to do now though is use terrain response so i press that it gives me a whole bunch of modes down the bottom here so you've got grass gravel snow mud ruts sand rock crawl and wading i'm just going to go over to mud ruts i think that's appropriate for where we are 
and then I'm going to go to our ride height and make sure that is on off-road. There we go there, I'll just go off-road one for the moment and let's see how we go. Look, it shouldn't be too much of a struggle. Ahead of the driver there, I'm able to see exactly what the car is doing in terms of its off-road modes. So right now both, oh there it goes, it's just started locking the centre diff and it'll probably start locking the rear diff as we start inclining here. The other thing I like here as well, if I pop the cameras on, pop that into off-road mode. Have a look at that. So I can clearly see out the front of the car there. I can see what the wheels are doing down the side. That's going to be handy for our descent when it comes to that uh, section going down where all the ruts and stuff are. And then the other cool thing is I can see through the car. So I can actually see where we're heading here. So I can avoid those trees and stuff if I need to. So look, it's getting up here, piece of cake. It's um, it's really not struggling at all. The throttle isn't overly sensitive either, which means I'm able to just lean into it. Oh, hold on. A little bit stuck there. That's because I'm going a little too slow. Let's see if we can recover out of here. I'll just really give it a boot full. There we go, no dramas at all. So it's able to lock those diffs really quickly as well. And it means that if you do find yourself in a little bind like that where you would easily get up if you actually just kept in it, it just sorts itself out. So. Pretty impressive setup. Okay, so we're coming down the other side of our hill here. Let's see how it goes here with the descent control. So you can actually adjust the speed of this on the way down to using the cruise control. So you can see here if I flick that down, it actually adjusts the maximum speed we're going to achieve going down the hill. So I've got that in its lowest setting at the moment. We can see the ruts as we travel down. We know exactly where the car's going to land and everything is nice and controlled. So Really impressive there, and I don't know, it's just super effortless. And this is such a simple system. I just press a button and it does its thing. So uh, let's go back up the hill now in low range, and we'll just see what that feels like with this uh, petrol engine. So to engage low range, you press the low range button, and it says here to put it into neutral. It then does the switch into low range, tells us it's in low range with that little light just there. And we'll then go back up our hill. It automatically puts us into off-road height two, so we have a little bit more clearance going up. And we'll see what that feels like while it's in low range. Okay, so here we go. We're going back up our hill here. This is probably gonna be a walk in the park, but it's a little bit challenging because there is an exposed rock as we ascend this. And I wanna make sure that my tire comes into contact with that so we don't hit the car. And again, I can see there on that camera, I'm able to basically line up the rock and there it goes there as we touch and then go up it so yeah tell you what if you don't know too much about off-roading and I'm definitely not an off-road expert um, this is so effortless and it just basically does everything for you so yeah really impressed here now it's time for our offset mogul this is where we're going to be able to test the structural rigidity of the car and also what it's like when we get a wheel entirely off the ground we'll see how that rear diff copes with that but first we've got to get thrown onto our side here <laughs> I say this every time, but it never gets easier because uh, it feels like I'm going to fall out of my seat. Okay, so we're coming up to the section now where we'll have full flex on the car, which is around about there somewhere. I love also ahead of the driver here on the head-up display, I can see exactly what the car is doing and how much roll I have and what the wheels are doing as well. So that's very handy. Very impressive, it is very strong, and I think they've been doing this long enough now, so there's no excuses there for it to not be a strong chassis. All right, let's head over to the next section. This is where we're going to see how it performs when we get a wheel off the ground. Keep in mind with this and the Defender, the air suspension gives you so much latitude there in terms of articulation, so I'm hoping it means that we won't have any dramas here when we get a wheel off the ground. So here we go here, we're coming to our wheel lift, which is around about right we're getting there about there i can feel we're sort of slightly tilted off the ground there now you can see here it has automatically held the car because i've got my foot on the brake and it's also telling us on the screen there what's happening with the suspension it shows that this wheel is off the ground and we have full articulation now as i roll out of the brake because this is a four-wheel drive it should really just pull us out without any dramas but I'm curious to see what it'll do here so rolling out of the brake now and it's locked the diff there piece of cake yeah look that is that is that is really impressive and, and i can't iterate enough here that if you are an off-roading novice a car like this is just 
is really effortless. And even if you don't do hardcore off-roading, with all-terrain tyres, this is gonna be able to do the bulk of what most people do before you need to go buy aftermarket accessories. So if you are looking at buying one of these, just make sure you option that rear differential lock. I think that makes a world of difference there in terms of how far you can actually head off-road. So the Land Rover Discovery, um, look, to be honest, I genuinely don't know why you'd pick anything else in this segment if you have lots of kids and like doing a bit of adventuring. It simply meets the brief on every single front you can think of for an SUV. It'll go off-road and go off-road probably more than any other car in this segment. It will then carry seven people in comfort, including adults. It'll tow three and a half tons and that engine is an absolute pearler. So if you do enjoy having fun and you know, going for a fun drive every now and then when the kids aren't with you, um, that engine is going to put a big smile on your face. And so is the diesel. So it really just meets the brief on everything that you can think of, including the technology front as well with PV Pro. So I don't know, it is hard to fault and I feel like I'm just giving you this glowing review, but it really just impresses me what they've been able to do. And it's not overly expensive when you look at the competitors in the segment. So let me know, have you ordered one of these in the comments section below? Has it been going? Um, is yours doing the same thing that the infotainment system's doing in that one where it just sort of switches between air conditioning and, and other random stuff? Uh, I, I hope they can fix that at some point. Uh, let me know what you think about your discovery down there. Or if you're looking at buying one of these, let me know which options and colors you've gone for. But if you did enjoy this video, please make sure you share it with your mates. And if you haven't done so already, subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon. That's going to tell you every single time we drive one of these things. But until next time, take it easy.